Welcome, you have reached review time with Imperial and today's review will be from season two, episode six. Subscribe to the channel, like the video. Let's begin. So this is a, another filler episode. They're just getting through the season at this point. Um, nothing too spectacular. Um, this is called a Paz de Dukes, um, which stands for Dance for Two. So the episode picks up where the last one left off with Boy coming into the diner, speaking to Tian um, Chen, which is Kenny's mom. Uh, he begins to speak to Tian Chen why he kept Sarah a secret, basically saying that um, he has to get everybody home. And basically his spiel of saying, you know, Sarah could be a key element to getting um, everybody home. Kenny interrupts the conversation. Boy pretty much at that moment says, you know, thanks for our time. And he, and he heads back to the church, opens up the church. There's no more chairs or nothing in the church. He just sees a woman. First, he sees a um, little um, figurine with music of a ballerina dancing. And he starts to see a woman dancing. And a woman comes up on him and tries to bite him. You find out that he's hallucinating. He's still in a diner. And uh, has a dizzy spell and falls and hits his head on the ground, the diner. Kenny helps him up. He pretty much said, um, I'm cool. But he stood up and had a dizzy episode. So Tian Chan told Kenny he needs to take him to see Christy at the wellness center. Meanwhile, at the colonial house, the food is going low. And Donna is leaving for the night and leaving Ellis and Fatima in charge tells them they need to keep that the food shortage is low keep it um to themselves because the group may start to panic so it goes to the wellness center and shows christy finds mariella's rehabilitation program pamphlet package and she confronts mariella asks her are you using again mariella pretty much has junky tendencies and is in denial so Christy pretty much said, you, you know, you basically, these drugs that we have is all that we we have. We can't have you, you know, pretty much um, uh, using up the drugs with your junky tendencies, pretty much. So, uh, Boyd and Kenny have a discussion. They're having a walk out to that um, out pass where the trap door is out there and he have a talk about what he experienced in the forest and you know he with the man and uh pretty much giving him his blood he hallucinates again he sees the woman doing ballet so uh it shows boyd is now at the wellness center with christy he also explains about the story in the forest about the man giving him his blood um, Boyd tells Christy, you know, at the time comes that he pretty much going to need him or her to pit him down. Kenny and Christy talk about Boyd and having Parkinson's and then leading to dementia. Could this be the early stages? And then pretty much Christy said it's a long ways from that. So it goes back to Donna. She makes it to the Matthews house. She's staying there for the night. She's giving them some food. However, Jim is disappointed that the food is running out and him and um, Donna having a back and forth pretty much saying you need to tell the rest of the town that there's a food shortage but she figures it's going to be chaos if you tell everybody that so goes back to boy at the wellness center and um, he hallucinates again when he wakes up and pulls a gun out on Mariella meanwhile it goes back to the uh colonial house and Fatima's upset with Ellis that he knew about Sarah and um, he didn't tell her because of course Boyd told him his dad told him to keep it um, to himself the uh, colonial house is in panic over the food Dale is mouthing off he's 
chopping up some vegetables and he's upset that the new people that came to the house from the bus is now taking away the food from the original group and he's mouthing off so Ellis is pretty much like hey man calm down and so Dale out of frustration and he turns around and stabs Ellis with some scissors Ellis starts bleeding out and everybody's frantic like what we do just pit him on they say nah he's gonna die so Fatina's freaking out Elgin jumps into heroic mode he runs out the house and goes and gets the van and pulls the van up to the house and they dr now drive and head um to the wellness center meanwhile you got boy talking to the spirit priest and basically uh kenny comes down and catches him talking to himself so as elgin is heading to the wellness center of course ellis is dying and can't breathe uh christy jumps into action they knock on the door kick chrissy lets him in the wellness center chrissy jumps into action and has him does an emergency surgery um, to open up Ellis airways now Ellis uh, needs to um, Chrissy needs blood because Ellis she was able to open up his airways but he lost a lot of blood so she needs um, blood to do a transfusion however you know Boyd has that the blood of the, the man in him so he doesn't want to do the transfusion so they pretty much tell Boyd like listen Cause they don't believe these things are happening to boys so uh he knows his blood is tainted so right when they uh kenny pulled a gun out on boy pretty much tell him hey man i need you to do this we don't got time for that mary yella seen the worms that be moving through his body and so at that moment they was like oh so now they believe boy so Bloy pretty much had a plan on how to get rid of the blood. Because first, Kenny was like, hey, give it to me. And we'll just worry about it later. Because if he gave it to you, you give it to somebody else. So Boy was pretty much like, nah, you know, Kenny, you shouldn't take an L like that. So Boy said, trust me, I got this. So he went out. And, you know, by this time, it's nighttime. And the creatures is out. So he went out making noises. So the creatures come talk to him. I mean, yeah, basically come talk to him. So the main creature that we be seeing that we went on the bus and killed them people on the bus, he shows up and so Boyd cut his throat and he had already cut himself. And then he, when he cut his hand and then cut the um, creature's throat, he pretty much said, my blood is now your blood. And um, backed off and the creature just started laughing so then when the creature started laughing, the creature started choking and then passed out. So the rest of the creatures that was surrounded, they didn't even look at Boyd. They started looking at the creature that fell on the ground. Boyd went back in. And so at this point, he was now giving um, Ellis the transfusion because he figured that it was passed on. So it goes back to the Matthews house where Donna and Ethan is having a heart to heart and of course when donna is a sh um, strong character for this um series and she's having a heart to heart ethan ethan pretty much tells her i told my parents that i wasn't scared but i'm really scared i want to just go home and donna pretty much said i'm scared too but they pretty much fear you got to use it so it goes back to the wellness uh center and Ellis is now stabilized and Fatima pretty much said I gotta, you know, get some not some air, but she need to get away from the situation because it was tense. So she cries in front of Christy and pretty much tells Christy like, Hey, um, I almost lost them. Christy pretty much said, But you didn't. And so Fatima pretty much said, I need do you have any pregnancy tests? So of course she thinks she's pregnant. Uh, Kenny goes up to Boyd, pretty much tell Boyd's hey man, I'm sorry I didn't believe you, I should have believed you. And they both look on out the window to see if right now the creature that Boyd gave the blood to is still on the ground. He hasn't moved, so they're waiting to see if he moves. By the time the morning time comes, they probably going to fall asleep. And when they wake up, that body's going to be gone. So that's the end of the episode. Like I said, just a filler 
nothing too too much just you know a filler to get through the season subscribe to the channel like the video till next time